Hi, everyone. I am so excited because I am speaking again with author Camille Pagan, and we are talking about her brand new book coming out April 1st called I'm Fine and Neither Are You. And I love this title so much, Camille. Thank you for talking with me. Thanks, Michelle. I'm so happy to be speaking with you again. Uh, Everybody, you know, when I tell this title, everybody has the same response. They're all like, oh, that's, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You always have Thanks. great titles, but this one, I think this one is like my favorite because it's, you know, Thank you have you. to like listen to it. I'm fine and neither are you. And you're like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's my favorite of my titles too. It just so speaks to life, right? Yeah. And I love your covers because I was looking at, you know, when you pull your name up on Amazon, I can see all of them. This is your fifth novel. And they're all so similar but different, and I love that. It's like it's, we can tell it's you. You know, it's kind yeah. of like your theme cover, and I love yeah. that. Well, I can't take credit for that. I have a wonderful team at Lake Union, and they have just done a spectacular job keeping me on brand, but, again, making those covers a little different each time so you don't accidentally think you're buying the same book over and over. You know what? I have to tell you that Lake Union has been some of my favorite covers lately. Like, I'll look at a cover and be like, I love that. And then I see it's Lake Union. I'm like, of course. It's like, I don't know. Lately, it's just been a thing for me. And I'm like, they are doing such a great job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They do a really great job. Well, okay, so, and, and as I, you know what, I'm, I'm really, because I, you know, I have this book digitally, so I didn't get to hold it in my hands, because, of course, it doesn't come out until April 1st, but I'm looking at the picture, and I'm realizing, because um, the two main characters, who are Penny and San, do you say it, Sanjay? Sanjay, yeah. Sanjay, okay, that's what I'm hearing in my head. Like, you can tell, because he's Indian, and she is, is she Latino? She's half Latina, yeah. Yeah. So I can see that he is. I was like, oh, I didn't even notice that on the cover. Like, you could definitely tell that he's Indian. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I try to write my characters in a way that looks like the world around me. Um, yeah. My own family, my brother-in-law is Hawaiian and half Japanese. My other brother-in-law is Indian. My husband's Puerto Rican. Um and so, and just our community here in Ann Arbor and everywhere we've lived actually has just been really diverse. And so I try to write my books that way because that's the world that I know. Yes. And, and this comes across so well in this book too. Um, but uh, the story is just, it is so touching. And, it, you know, I said this to you for your last book and it it's like, it speaks to us as, as women. Like you have a way of writing it that you like hit us. Okay. Like, yeah. and, and I hope and I, so. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so like it's like an undercurrent, you know, where you're like, ah, oh, I didn't think of that. Like, and I'm older, you know, I'm 54, and I've been married twice. But my second marriage, like, we raised six kids, and wow. some of the themes that you brought up in their marriage, I was like, ah, oh, I would have known that. Like, you know, it could have been a game changer, you know, like if I just you know, because I think that you go through the hard stuff with your kids. Okay, they have yeah. two children, and um, you know, pregnancy and birth, and then babies and toddlers. And some days you're just walking in this fog, barely paying attention to each other, right? Yeah. Yes, or maybe even shifts in the night where you're you're kind of doing your own thing to get it all done, and living these parallel lives and not really coming together. I think it's incredibly common even in a strong marriage. And I really wanted to show that in this book. I think I read a lot of books and have written books about marriages that fall apart, but I think there's not as much out there about doing the work when you really did start from a good place. Um, you know, I, I don't believe that every marriage is meant to be saved. I think some of my friends who've gone through divorces are much happier for it, but then you see people who split up who, I think, oh, what if they just, you know, stuck it out a little longer, tried a little harder, figured some things out, and that was the kind of story that I wanted to write. And I have to tell you, because we got divorced back in 2012, and so, Mm -hmm. you know, I have a little bit of perspective now, you know, you know, get Mm -hmm. away from it a little bit, and and now that the children are growing up, and you do, like, we did try marriage counseling, but it wasn't... It wasn't enough at that time, but I look back and and as I'm reading this book, I mean, I was just like, 
there were just, it wasn't huge. We didn't have huge problems. We had a bunch of little yeah. problems, you know, yeah. and our marriage actually, I, I truly believe it could have been saved. I think that my mom had died right around the time that we separated. Yeah. And, you know, so there were a bunch of just like their marriage, like the stress, it was almost like, you know, like that, that one thing. And it was just like, oh, it was just too much, yeah. you know, yeah. but as women, like I know I can say it was my fault for not speaking up when I needed help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that and that I, was such a theme for you in this book. Yes. I think that it's funny. Just in chatting with readers who read early copies, this is coming up a lot where we think that we're being proactive, but there are still things that we don't say because we want to be polite or kind or we've been raised not to or we think it's going to make it worse and so we bite our tongues. And I think that that can be really damaging, especially if it becomes this long-term habit and you do learn to say, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I don't think it's that every person you run into at the grocery store wants to know exactly how every part of it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a fine line there. But something I learned a couple of years ago, I was um, I had an incident that inspired this book. So I was working as an editor for a magazine um, part-time. I was freelancing. I was trying to write another book. And my kids were having two separate things, but they were both having a hard time. One was having a hard time in school, and the other was not sleeping through the night. So my life was just kind of falling apart. And I went to see a friend of mine for brunch, and I hadn't seen her in a while. And her mother was dying of cancer at the time. And so, you know, I said, how are you? And and she said, well, you know, my mom's doing really badly, but let's not start there. How are you? And I said I was fine, and I kind of gave her the really quick, glossy version of everything that was going on. And she looked at me, because, you know, I thought, like, her mom's dying of cancer. I don't want to put any burdens on right. her. She doesn't need to hear how my life is going. And she looked at me and said, Camille, you know, it's okay if you're not fine. I don't think I've ever seen you so stressed, even though you're saying everything's okay. And it was a huge wake-up call for me because I I didn't think it was okay to say that I wasn't fine, you know, especially not to this particular friend, even though she cared for me so much. But it was just, it was a wake-up call for me. And so a couple of years later, I was thinking about this storyline about a couple who's having marital problems and um, the protagonist has his best friend. And I came back to that theme again from my own personal life and mm. put it in a fictional novel. I love that because you know what, even, and when my mom did, when she died, she died of cancer too. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty quick, mm-hmm. it was a pretty quick, Sorry. quick thing. And it was on a weekend and my husband went to work on Monday and my uh-huh. kids went to school. And I remember mm-hmm. just sitting there going, what am I going to do? Cause I've been taking yeah. care of her. And she died, you know, and it was like, mm-hmm. and, but then people were asking, they were like, so how are you? I'm like, good. I'm fine. You know, I'm fine. I'm, I'm good. Like, you know, because I think if you're not totally falling apart on the floor, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, so that's why. And so I love the story of Jenny because her best friend, um, mm-hmm. she, who she thinks everything's fine. You know, it's her best friend and she thinks she's mm-hmm. fine. But then, you know, I don't know how much to say. So I'm going to let you talk about it. <laughs> well, so my protagonist, uh, Penelope, she has this relationship, uh, a friendship, that really in a way has saved her life. She was uprooted from New York and ends up in a small, unnamed Midwestern town with her husband, who has planned to go to medical school, but then drops out after a year, and strikes up this friendship with this woman who's in a very similar circumstance, only everything about her life looks a little better. She has more money. She's got this wonderful husband. She has one child who's very well-behaved and a successful career. She just looks like she's got it all going on, and she's very wise. So she tells Penelope, um, this is Jenny, the friend, she tells Penelope to, you know, use gratitude to find her way in life and um, to really look on the bright side. And so Penelope buys it because she has no reason not to and then she finds out that Jenny has been concealing something really major from her she has a problem with addiction um, that plays out I won't ruin the storyline but it plays out in a really unexpected way and that is Penelope's wake-up call she realizes that her friend was lying to her not in a malicious way but she wanted to make it look like everything was okay 
and I've just seen this play out in my own life so many times where you think mm. I've got it all and right. you know, they have everything under control and then whether they reveal it to you or someone else does, you realize everyone has their own complicated interior life. There's no such thing as perfect and you oh. forget that. Yes, we do. And especially when we're in our 30s and 40s going through mm-hmm. this time. I remember, you know, mm-hmm. just being at kids' sporting events and finding out that a couple had split up and being like, yep. what? What? Yep. Like, not them. Like, yeah. <laughs> they that were is, perfect. That has happened to me several them. times. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always the not them. You know, it's funny. The people who think I'm going to get divorced don't. And then – you know, someone who you think that they just have this perfect marriage and it um it isn't of course because there's no such thing as a perfect marriage. I think that is part of the, if anybody gets anything from this, I hope that when the women that are reading this that are experiencing this time in their life, like there is no like it, when you're don't look around, you know, because mm-hmm. I think that that was a huge problem for me because I thought I was the only like I said, there was no huge problems. There were all these little problems. But they yeah. all magnify when you look around and think, well, they don't have those. I don't see them. Mm-hmm. You know, their husband looks like he's doing everything. <laughs> yeah. And you oh, start yeah. comparing. And she did. And, you know, it's it's a, it's not a good thing to go in, you know, to when you're in the midst of all that, to compare kids, yeah. compare husbands. It's not a good thing, right? Yes. And I think social media has made that even more. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Everything gosh. Everything has a filter on it. You're only seeing the very best case scenario because, of course, why is someone going to put all the terrible things up there? Right. But I think it gives us um, just a very incomplete picture of what real lives look like. And I'm not advocating for getting off social media, but, you know, you have to look at yeah. it. Put your, put your glasses on and look closely because, you know, it's just not the whole picture. Yeah, it is. I find it very dangerous, too. I try to stick to business as much as I can on social media. Mm-hmm. But, I, you know, I had a friend from high school who knew I had gotten divorced because it was on social media. And she mm-hmm. asked me to have lunch, and she was like, I want to get a divorce. I was like, I saw a picture of your family. Like, no, you don't want to get divorced. And she was like, right. so? <laughs> So don't take those pictures that you think everybody else is at the beach and all happy and, you know, don't look, don't compare those either, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not real. It's not real life. It's not real. But I loved her so much. I love the way that she handled her life, you know, like when she realized that things needed to change. And I think that that is what was, you know, just even even when I got finished with it yesterday, I was like thinking about little things you know, it doesn't have to be like your relationship with your husband. There's lots of little things in your life that you can change and that you're kind of just walking through thinking, I'm I'm okay, I'm good, it's okay, yeah. like everything's fine, you know, and you're like, wait, but this part I'm really just not that happy about, you know, and I can change that, right? Yes, and I think that sometimes it takes, not always, but sometimes it takes a tragedy or something major happening to kind of shake you up and get you out of those ruts and say, okay, there's something that I really am not actually satisfied with when it comes down to it, and it's time to make a shift. So, yeah, yeah. And that's really well, part of every story I write. I was going to say, that is kind of like how all of your books are, and I just mm-hmm. think that you have such an amazing way of telling a story that when we're done with the book, it kind of sits with us, and, Thank you know, you. Like, we can't just me. leave the book behind. We're just like – Oh, okay. You know, I got to think about this for a minute. And and we fall in love with your characters. And and that's another thing. I read this so fast. And I know some authors are like, oh, well, it took me, you know, a year and a half to write. <laughs> I just, I no, it. no, I love it. I That's the biggest compliment. If someone says, I couldn't put it down, I read it so quickly. I think that's amazing. I, that is why I write. Yes, it was uh, it was awesome. So I see that you have another one coming out next year. Yes. Um, that already has a title. This won't yes. end well. Which I'm already like, ah, uh, we got. What do we have to wait till? <laughs> to read February. It'll be out soon. Oh so, yeah, and I'm, I'm so enjoying this book. I'm editing the new one right now. This won't end well, and it's just this really quirky, unexpected, really funny story. Um, that's more reminiscent of life and other near-death experiences than my other books. Very well, different in theme, but um, that same kind of tongue-in-cheek humor. 
Yeah, and it's right, exactly. And it's so much fun because this book is coming out, you know, in a, in a little bit here. It's already been mm-hmm. out just for everybody who gets the Amazon first read, just so you know, it's all, it's on Amazon first read. And which yes. I love that. I love I'm loving that program that they're wonderful, doing. wonderful program. <laughs> so if you're a Prime member, you can download it for free. Oh, no catch, just, no nothing to it. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. They just started that too a couple of months ago, I think, and or at least it's when I became aware of it. And and it's an awesome mm-hmm. program. And um, but then you're gonna have your book launch, and then to already be into editing your next book. I mean, that must be so much fun for you to like, you know, be celebrating both things at the same time. I love it. I there is not a second where I think, oh, I should do something else. I just love writing books. Oh, that's awesome. I love to hear that. It like when it's just joyful to and you, your book come it, it shows that. I can see how much fun you Thank have you. writing these books. I really can. I can see your characters and how much fun you have developing them and and yes. the kids. I love the way you write the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, you just I don't know, but I go through it again. I have grandchildren now, and um, mm-hmm. so my daughter will call me, and, you know, she called me today with her. She's a six-month-old daughter who's her third child. Oh, wow. She said, Mom, she won't let me put her down. She gives me mean looks, and she screams at me. And I was like, oh my gosh. what fault is that? I love experiencing them through her eyes, the little children okay. thing again. I don't want to do it again. I just like watching from afar. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly right. You know, I know I went through it. I don't remember it. It's good. It's all good. <laughs> it's so funny well, how much thanks. of motherhood you forget. You do. <laughs> you do. No, I I didn't even think that. I, sometimes I try to remember because of what she goes through because she'll say, well, what did you do? I'm like, um, I, I, don't know. I got through it somehow. <laughs> I was at the doctor's office the other day filling out forms for my daughter, and she's almost 11. Oh. And there was something on there about, you know, developmental milestones. When did they do blah, blah, blah? And I was like, oh. I, I don't know. You're like, <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> Yes, there were a few things that were very obvious, but I could not tell you exact months anymore or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's gone. I know. So. I, I almost think that we were made to forget because it, there was, you know, there were times you know, that were very difficult where we kind of, like I said, we were just like sleepwalking through. <laughs> no. Yep, no doubt. And that's how you have more children. <laughs> and that's you why forget. I know, because you do forget. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Camille. It's always fun to talk to you. And I'm going to have her Same. links listed below. And um, like I said, you can pre-order this book. Also, I'm going to put the indie link so that um, any of your bookstores, your local bookstores you want to support and tell them you want the book. And Thank they'll get you. it for you, and I love that too. I mean, I'm I'm loving that whole thing with the. I've been going around to local bookstores lately and supporting them, and we just don't want to lose them. So, no, as easy no, as Amazon I is. love my bookstores. <laughs> yes. So well, thank you, and I can't wait to talk to you next year. I can't believe I have to wait a whole year, but I'll. I'll... Same here. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. Such a pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye bye. You too. Bye.